Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story. It is Monday, we're in a new book. Actually, we're in the last book of the Old Testament and uh, the book of Malachi. And the, the theme of Malachi is sincere worship. So it, it's a prophetic book in the Old Testament. It emphasizes the importance of sincere worship towards God. Um, It was a message to the Jewish people in this post-exilic period, so after the exile from Babylon. Um, He challenges the people about their pattern of insincere worship by using rhetorical questions to compel them to reflect on their attitudes and behavior towards God. He warns of judgment against those who offered God-defiled sacrifices and those who broke their covenant agreement with God. He emphasizes the importance of obedience to God and putting him first above all else, including in our material possessions. Um, The book of Malachi serves as a reminder of the continual need for heartfelt repentance and sincere worship towards God so that we maintain a right relationship with him. And so um, today we're today's reading would have been. Uh, verses 6 from chapter 1 through verse 9 of chapter 2. And it says, The Lord of heaven's army says to the priest, A son honors his father, and a servant respects his master. If I am your father and master, where are the honor and respect I deserved? You have shown contempt for my name. He says, But you ask, how have we ever shown contempt? for your name. You've shown contempt by offering defiled sacrifices on my altar. And so then he goes on to talk about their defiled sacrifices. And so their, their sacrifices were part of their worship, you know, what they offered. Um, and they, they weren't giving their best. So I think it's important for us to talk about how this affects us today. So how do we honor God today? That's the first thing. And how do we show contempt to God today? Well, I think we honor God by loving others well, uh, living out God's word in our own lives. Uh, I think by um, obeying the Ten Commandments, you know, (laughs) in our lives. Uh, I think just, you know, reading God's word, being in, um, you know, I think through prayer. There are, I think, many ways in the way we live, the way we act, the way we speak. In those ways, I think we can honor God. and in terms of showing contempt for God or dishonoring God, I think that I think the 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 opposite, <laughs> you know, when we when we break God's law purposefully, when we are um, when we are putting down other people, when we are um, not living uh, not living for God, or when we're um, not praying to God, I think in those ways, uh, if we if we want a relationship with God, if we want to honor Him, uh, then we should be praying to him. We should be living our lives for him. And so I think that's, it's kind of the, the either side of the coin, you know, the good, the good, the bad, um, of how we show honor or contempt. Kind of just piggybacking on what he said there. Um, coming from a Catholic background and going into, um, what, how I understand Jesus now, the big thing was moving from religion into relationship and not only knowing God, but loving him and and wanting to do things his way because of love for him instead of out of duty or i have to do this or something it just changes your attitude much like you know when you're when your kids love you as a parent versus just doing what they're told so they stay out of trouble i think that is one of the the cores to honoring god and that should cause an overflow into all the different areas in your life, like Zach was saying, the way that you speak, the way that you act, um, living a life of integrity, and probably most importantly, loving other people. I mean, because he wants us to love people, because he loves them. Um, And then dishonoring him would be the opposite of all those things. So is honoring God always... But you, you you use the word out of relationship and not out of duty. But aren't there times you do it out of duty and not out of relationship? I'd say there's times that you do it out of duty, but you have a desire to do something else that you combat with. 
I like Paul talks about, you know, things that I know I'm supposed to, I don't do. I think that, you know, there are times when, um, I could, well, I can think with other relationships, right? With like a friendship, you know, there are times when I, you know, there's a friend of mine who's in a time of trouble and I do care about them, but I do not feel like talking to them, but it's almost out of duty. I do it because I know it's the right thing to do. And so, um, so I, and I think with God, there are times when I wake up on a Sunday morning and, you know, um, I do not, you know, I, I, I do not want to get out of bed, <laughs> but I know I need to be at church. I do it. It's, it's out of duty because it's what we're supposed to do. I, I believe as Christians, we should be with other believers and gather together. I think it's extremely important, uh, but it's also out of relationship. I think it's, it's, it's both, you know, I do it because of my relationship with God. If I didn't have a relationship with God, I'd have no reason to carry through with the duty. Uh, but because I love God, even if sometimes I, you know, am tired or other other elements are introduced into the equation, uh, I do it out of duty because of my love for him, because of my relationship. So uh, I'm going to come back to a question in just a minute I want to ask as a follow-up, because we say, we, I, 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 it's not that I dislike it. I just don't think we talk about it clear enough when we say, oh, you just, you know, you do it out of relationship. You got to love God. And I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. The duty piece of it. So I think the clearest picture of your relationship with Christ is your marriage. That is the clearest picture. Maybe your relationships are different, but everything I do in my marriage, I don't do because I want to, I like to, or even because I, I, I wouldn't even say because I l love her at the moment. It is because I am bound by a covenant that requires me to do this. And so I do it whether I want to or not. And I, I, sometimes I think we, one of my, one of my concerns, particularly in modern churches, if you love God enough, you'll be fine. Well, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Well, if I love my wife enough, what it means is when I don't feel like it, I'm going to do it. Like I'm going to do what I need to do, whether I like to or not, you know, because there is there is a certain amount of duty that comes with love. We separate the two. See, we the thing and that's the thing I want to talk about love is in the in the. In, in the modern church, one of the things that I see happening is we're separating duty from love. Like, you can't have love without duty. All right, it's a, I'll give you some examples. If I, if I tell my wife I love her, my duty is to remain faithful. Mm -hmm. Right? That, yeah. that, that's a duty. Like, you, you can like it or not. You can call it a rule. You can call it, well, you're being legalistic because, you, don't, you know, you, you don't want to have an open marriage. No, 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 no. It, it, if you love somebody, there's an obligation. There's a duty. There's a responsibility that goes with it. And what I see happening in the modern church is we're saying, oh, you know, God loves everybody, and we just need to love everybody. Well, what does that mean? If I love people, if I love my wife, if I love my kids, you know, for example, you you use the the in reverse. I'm gonna I'm gonna use it the different way. You as a parent with your kids, mm -hmm. if you say you love them, you if you tell me you enjoyed, liked, or wanted to do everything you did as a parent, you're a liar. Oh yeah, right. Oh, yeah. You didn't. You, you you did it because you 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 were obligated. Love required you to do whatever. Provide shelter go to work so they had food on the table, mm -hmm. play catch when you came home and you didn't feel like it, you know, you had worked all day, help them. You know, there, it's, it, it, there are requirements that come with that. And I think, so if, if I was answering the question, how do we show contempt for God? One of the places in modern culture that I think we're showing contempt for God is we're removing the expectations from love. And there's no such thing. There's, there is no such thing as love without expectations. You know, but Jesus even said, if you love me, what? You will obey my commandments. Mm -hmm. Like if you like, that's the measure, the measure of whether you do or you don't, you know, is, is, are you being obedient? And I have real, I have real concerns about modern church culture that talks about love, but removes all obligation. That's what I would say. And I think that when you love somebody, 
You will do certain things out of responsibility, out of duty, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, you know, um, that, that, that you have to do. And we don't like that. That makes us, you know, we, we're like unconditional love means there are no conditions. I, I don't think that's exactly right. Am I correct? Yeah, by definition. If it's reciprocal, if love is reciprocal, let me hmm. let me put it put it that way. And and our I I don't <clears throat> let me let me say it. Let me I, because this is kind of where my brain is at today. There's nothing you can do to make God love you anymore. But there are lots of things you can do to have a better relationship with him. Mm-hmm. And they're not yeah. the same. They're they're just not the same, and we confuse the two. God God loves you no matter what. Yes, He does. My I, I'm I I believe I love my wife no matter what, but there are things she does or I do that are going to affect the condition of that relationship. Mm-hmm. You know that significantly are impacting. As a matter of fact, to the extent that we may love each other and not have a relationship. Like that's possible. You can love people and not be in relationship with them. That's that's entirely possible. And so, um, do you think people show contempt for God when they blatantly no that's not, when they try to remove all of the expectations from the relationship? Oh yeah, I mean because you're you're redefining it or you're you're watering it down, and that's going to cause confusion and people that are learning from you and i mean even like generational confusion that can mm-hmm. send people off on a far tangent yeah I, I mean i've i've known people and even myself like I, i've been this way before too where i have not been obedient to god and then something goes wrong in my life and i think god why would you let this happen to me <laughs> it's like well it's i was nowhere near god at the time you know i wasn't living for him and i was you know and, and um and it's easy to just blame it on god because you know he's in control but the the reality of it is that you know we, it, it's just like with like a spouse you know if you are um it's it's easy to judge someone or to not trust someone when you're when you're not with them or in like relationship with them um and when you're not being obedient to each other too you know it's like that that completely alters the relationship and so um when you live in obedience to god it'll only do good things for your relationship with him uh and and too even when you do go through trials uh you will have a, a stronger relationship and be in a place where you can lean on God in those times rather than blame God in those mm-hmm. times. Well, thank you for joining us today for this edition of One Single Story. I hope you'll be back tomorrow as we continue this conversation around the book of Malachi.